Welcome to Backup Exec 2010, How to Protect Your VMware Virtual Environments. As you can see, the Backup Exec has an initial getting started page that will help you configure all of the uh, portions of Backup Exec 2010 that are required before you get started doing and performing actual backups. To kick off a VMware backup, we can simply select the icon here and say new backup job. This will open the backup job properties window and allow us to specify all the uh, specific configurations required to do a VMware virtual backup. If we focus on the left hand side here we can see that it's broken down into a few areas. We've got the source which basically allows us to specify what virtual machines, one or many, that we'd like to protect, as well as allows us to give specific credentials that may be necessary to access into those virtual machines, whether that's a virtual center login, or an ESX server login, or the VM login itself. Destination allows us to specify where that backup will ultimately be stored, and then the settings area allows us to specify the name and description and enter the final configuration parameters for the specific type of backup that we were that we are going to perform. If we were doing a SQL based uh, backup we might uh, enter settings inside the Microsoft SQL Server area. In our case we will be doing a VMware backup so we will select VMware and then we can schedule it. So let's go through and first select which VM we want to protect. We'll give it a name here. Call this VM Test 1. We'll come down to our virtual center and open up this tree. We'll give the virtual center the appropriate user login. And then this will actually communicate with the virtual center and pull the required information back uh, from virtual center that allows us to get a view at what our infrastructure looks like. So we can just keep expanding this until we see one or many uh, VMs that we would choose to back up. Now in this case, if we wanted to back up all of these VMs, we could simply check the box at this level and let it select all of them. And then going forward, each time a VM were to be added into this folder, it would automatically be added into this list. You can set that up. In this case, we just want to do one VM, so I'll uncheck that and specify the one VM. Now note, if I hadn't had the Virtual Center already uh, registered with Backup Exec 2010, I can simply right click on the Virtual Center node and say manage my Virtual Center and ESX servers. In this case I can simply come in and type a fully qualified domain name or an IP address and click add and then I would have another Virtual Center node or an ESX server directly listed here. Alright, with the selection specified I can now come down and specify the destination. In this case I've created a backup to disk folder this essentially is a representation of a network accessible uh, storage location and I'll select that and this is where we'll uh, produce, uh, or produce the backup files. Now one of the things to keep in mind with Backup Exec 2010 we are using the vSphere vStorage APIs so there's no longer uh, necessary to have a step to kind of pre uh, stage that those backup files. We'll simply grab them right out of the virtual infrastructure and put them into the final destination. So we'll give this job a name and then we'll move on down to the VMware option. Now remember if we were dealing with other types of backups then we may want to specify some of the other settings. In our case we are focused on a VMware backup so I will come in we can look at our backup methods and in this case you see that we're only dealing with a full backup. Now we will be showing shortly how you can do incremental and differential backups in your virtual environment as well. Let's choose our transport uh, mode. If we were dealing with uh, direct SAN access we could keep the SAN option selected. If we were going to be dealing with network based access we could keep the two NBD options selected. Now ultimately we can keep all of the options selected and just move the options up or down so we have a priority in how we want to connect into that virtual environment. 
from a best practice standpoint, the hot add feature, if you have direct access, if you can see the uh, SAN LUNs or the data, the storage um, data stores that you'll have access to, the hot add should be the quickest way to do a virtual backup. Now, do we want to specify yes or no on, on backing up virtual machines that are powered off? We can specify that. And then we can also specify whether or not to use the granular recovery technology. This is the ability that allows us to catalog at a very detailed level the data that we're backing up and then gives you the ability to restore it at a very granular level as well. So if you were dealing with uh, Microsoft Exchange, we could restore at the entire exchange level, at a user's mailbox level, at an individual email level, at an attachment or calendar entry level. So it gives you very granular recovery. And this is a new feature inside of Backup Exec 2010. We actually allow you from a vStorage based backup of your virtual infrastructure to do the granular recovery cataloging on applications residing inside of VMs. And in this case, you can see that we do this on Active Directory, Exchange, and Microsoft SQL Server. So with that specified, I can come in and specify a schedule. In this case, I want to go ahead and run it now, so I won't set up a schedule. But I certainly could, and I could make this a recurring uh, job. So it happens every day, every week, however often I chose to do so. So I'm going to go ahead and click Run Now. This gives us a summary of the job that we just picked, that we just created. And I'm going to click OK. And then we'll come in and to view the status of how that job is going, we can come over to the Job Monitor. So I click on the Job Monitor tab. And if you see, we've got the active job here. And this is what we named it, Backup VM Test specified where to back it up and we can see that it has in fact been kicked off. Now as this job completes it will show up down in our job history so we do keep track of every job and every backup that we're performing whether it's been successful partially successful or in some cases had issues we can then drive down into the job history and see exactly what's going on. Now, while this job is active, I can actually double click on it and get more detailed information about what's taking place inside the actual backup activity. So if we just keep this screen open, and I'll actually slide it over just a little bit so we can see the time going as well, we can see the different pieces that are happening behind the scenes for this uh, backup job. As we can see, the job has completed successfully and it's been verified.